I have eight so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, we do. Okay. Yes. So we'll get this party started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Laura Spalter, chair of the board. Um, welcome to our June executive committee meeting. We'll start with a roll call. Before we okay, uh, from the top, uh, Sylvia Alexander here, Bob Bender here, Joy Campbell Privateer here, Margaret Della here, Rosemary Ginty not yet, Rob Jaklowski yes, Edward Green not yet. Bob Fanuzzi, David Gelman. Present. Ram Dutt Singh, not yet. Ted Morris, Chuck Merdler, Omar Murray, Dan Patternack. Present. Laura Spalter. Present. Nick Fazio. I'm here. Marty Walpoff. Here. Julia Gomez. Here. Deb Travis. Uh, present. And Sergio Villaverde. Oh, okay. Rob, uh, Ed Green just. Oh, Edgar, I just saw him. Ed Green. And Bob Fanuzzi is away. He won't oh, be okay. joining the call. Ed Green, I see him coming on, but I guess he's coming on. That's what's mm -hmm. happening. Yeah, I'm here, guys. Okay, got it. Okay. Ram Dutt Singh, Ted Morris, no. Chuck Merdler, no. Omar Murray, no. Sergio Villaverde, no. Rosemary Ginty, no. Okay. So um, we have our first order approval of the executive committee minutes from May 4th, 2022. Um, they were distributed. Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? We have a motion to approve. Any second. Thank you. Um, is there anyone opposed to approving the May 4th minutes? Anyone abstaining? Okay, so unanimously approved. Okay, um, next we have our chair's report. There's a lot going on. Uh, and uh, I wanted to take a few minutes just to discuss what I think um, we could call a framework for beginning our discussion of the hybrid model. Um, as everyone knows, after June 14th, we'll be meeting in person. Um, reminded to everybody that this month we're meeting on Wednesday, June 29th, because of the Van Cortland um, Philharmonic event. And uh, that will be entirely in person, our first in-person meeting in over two years. Uh, we don't have a venue yet, but as soon as we do, I'll send it out with a reminder about this date. Um, I was thinking that, what does everyone think about the executive committee um, formulating, discussing processes as we go forward? Um, then after our discussion, we take it to the full board and, and more discussion. And ultimately things get put in the um, procedures manual that's online, handed out to everyone. Uh, what I'm talking about is um, such as the process for committees to choose to go hybrid or not. Um, you know, how, how will that work? Um, bearing in mind that, for example, next September, we, we're going to have five new members of the executive committee, uh, new chairs. We'll also have new members. And what happens every year is members switch, you know, around committees. So this is something that I just want to think about. Um, in a lot of instances, uh, the chairs uh, aren't familiar or don't know about the process 
to go hybrid enough to make a determination what they, you know, what they want to do. But we'll get that kind of information out to you uh, as soon as possible. Um, as you know, if a committee adopts the hybrid model, then some members of that committee or of the full board um, can opt to join via Zoom because they will request an exemption so that they can uh, enter remotely. Um, they won't count for a uh, quorum, but the, uh, that individual will be able to vote. Uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but there's just a lot to, you know, absorb with this whole process. Um, what is it exactly, you know, constitutes extenuating circumstances? Uh, if you're in California, would that work? If you're on a train and it's stuck under a tunnel and you want to call in or something like that, would that be acceptable? The state has already given us uh, clear examples, sickness, disability, caretaking role, um, you know, and the like. But there's a lot of gray area in this. And, uh, you know, so what, what do members do? Do they uh, notify the office? The state had said uh, in timely fashion, you know, in advance, things happen last minute as well. Um, but if it's in advance, should our process be you call the office, call uh, CC the secretary, you know, send an email. Certainly the chair of the committee needs to know that to expect that you're zooming in and needs to record that in the minutes along with the reason. Um, so along with those processes, um, the protocol for the board members and the public when we're meeting in the board office. Um, you know, should we have a mask policy? Should, uh, you know, uh, there isn't that much for, you know, there's not that much choice here. Um, whatever our policy is, whether to mask, uh, we have to post that and we have to be able to give out masks uh, on request if someone shows up and they don't have one. Uh, we have to post that on our agenda, our meeting notice. And so, you know, there may be other questions that will come up tonight that I didn't add on this list, but we thought, you know, that as a, just as a framework, how does everyone feel about discussions at executive committee, then going to the full board, then possibly after trial and error, this will not be fast, you know, as we explore this whole process, it would go in a, in a guide. Um, are there any comments about, uh, about what I've just discussed? Yeah, just <clears throat> two minor things. One is um, I attended in early May <clears throat> a session by COG on, on what community boards need to do under the new rules. And I just note mere technicality because it's irrelevant uh, OML says that uh, uh, we have to stop Zooming on June 15th unless <clears throat> the governor declares a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a COVID emergency or whatever emergency. The fact is that the COVID emergency exists until the 19th. Therefore, <laughs> not that it matters, but we don't have to start meeting in public until the 19th as a technical matter. The other thing is I was surprised, and shouldn't have been, but um, Ms. O'Neill in making her presentation indicated something that we had laughed at, but that COG is doing. Uh, <clears throat> the whole premise that all of this time we could have been teleconferencing, all we had to do was identify the location where anyone who was at the meeting would be located and the public had the right to attend any of those locations. What COG does is it zooms all of its meetings and they meet in three different places, Albany, Buffalo, and New York. And anyone, any member of the public can attend any of those three sites at their choice. And as a result of this, game, they have Zoom meetings all the time under the old OML. 
So I don't know how he would do that, but it's just an interesting thing to keep in the back of our minds. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done too, Marty. <laughs> uh, Marty, where, Marty, where did the 19th come from? We, we heard of the 9th, the 14th, and the 15th. Where, those, where's the dates 19th? Are, those dates are all OML related. What's not related to the law is the fact that we are currently in a statewide uh, governor declared COVID emergency, which comes to an end on the 19th. When that ends, then OML technically goes into place. Well, the governor's been all over the place and so has the BP and everyone else with that date after the, you know, with the 15th. Um, so anyway, any other hands up, any other comments about uh, what went out yesterday, what I've just said, what our framework should be? I don't see any hands. Well, um, Laura. David, uh, you didn't raise your hand. Uh, no, I know, I, I, I realize that, but I, I didn't see any. Go hands. ahead, David. Um, uh, just so that um, we, we still should do the practice that, you know, uh, uh, of how it would work. And I volunteered and set up two dates and they're both canceled. So I'd like to do that, you know, in the, in the coming days. What dates did you set up? To uh, come to the office and uh, work on uh, the technical uh, aspect of it from the office. We, well, we, we haven't been ready. I, and I really didn't realize that you wanted to come in and, and set something up, but we will. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I talked about it at the last exec and the last board meeting, and your response was, we'll take you up on that. And we will. We will take okay, you up but, on that. Okay. David? Never mind. Never mind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bob? Yeah, I, uh, Laura, I, you know, there, there are so many questions at this point that I think maybe the next step is we have to break this down into a series of, of separate questions uh, because right now we're, you know, we're looking at so many different issues that it's really hard to figure out where do we start? Um, for example, is, is there going to be a mask requirement for the office? I think that has to be something that, um, that exists for the entire office. I mean, it, we can't be in a situation where there's a mask requirement for one committee, but not for another committee. That's going to cause chaos. You know, which committee meeting am I at? Is this the one that requires masks or not? We, we don't really know at this point. We, we don't even know really how to answer the technical questions because we don't yet know when we're going to have the equipment and when we're going to have the training. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I think what we have to do is we have to break this down into separate questions, uh, you know, with input from everybody on, on the executive committee and figure out, you know, and try to figure out some order to these questions, some, you know, some sequence to them so that we know uh, which problems we have to address first and which ones, you know, can wait until a li little bit later on. I mean, right now I'm just, you know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing this whole thing as one big package and I'm trying to break it apart and figure out, okay, where, you know, where do we begin? Where do we start? You know, and, and then how do we proceed? What step by step? I so, think so that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's where I am at this point. I think that we would start with the training in our office and to see what it is, what the procedures are, how to do it, where a group is meeting in the office and the public is zooming into that meeting in our office. And Kira will speak to that, uh, what she's been doing, you know, to technically make that um, more feasible and easier. Uh, but you're absolutely right. I mean, what I did was I just threw out, we, you know, things that need to be discussed. But um, you're right. We'll take it in uh, in stages. Um, Dan. No, I, you might have already answered it in that, you know, you said Kira was going to speak about the equipment, which mm -hmm. I, I know David had mentioned. And I think that might be kind of the starting point. Um, and just to, and I guess I'll wait for Kira um, to, to answer. But I think we have the equipment already, but I'll wait for Kira. Okay. 
Um, any other, uh, uh, David? Yes, um, uh, Bob raises an interesting point. I, I think really the starting point is the office in and of itself. And mm -hmm. I think Kira, uh, in consultation with the staff, they should decide the rules for the office because they are gonna be the people most affected by the comings and goings. And I think that they should have a very large say on whether masks are required in the office. Uh, I, you know, Kara, I don't know if you have an opinion on that yet, whether you've discussed it with the staff yet, but I think you, you, you deserve the, sort of the right of first refusal. Thank you. Well, a lot of the meetings are at night and uh, you know, maybe we'll do a, a questionnaire to get more involvement. And, uh, but I think Bob's right in that it, we have a, a policy, we have a policy. It's just like um, when the BP was talking to us and said, when you go to a venue, whatever their policy is, you follow. If they say six feet apart, if they say uh, wear a mask, then we're using that venue and we do what they uh, what their protocol is. And the public and, you know, we'll decide that. Again, we're not gonna decide any of this tonight. It's just things to, to start thinking about. Um, I don't see any other hands or comments about this. Uh, absolutely, we need to know more. Okay, our, we, we voted this resolution on uh, May 10th. This is June 1st. Uh, so, you know, it's a process. And I guess, you know, Kira will work out a training day uh, or days, several days, and uh, speak with you, David, and uh, the staff, just like we did with the Zoom, people picked a date, and then they, uh, they came in, and we'll start. Okay, uh, Sylvia, and then I see Joy. I just want to bring up uh, one issue. First of all, all the committees are not the equal amount of uh, uh, members in the standing committees. They're all different sizes. The room is very small. We know that. Uh, even if people are wearing masks, they're going to be sitting right next to each other. We can't stretch the room. Uh, is there anything going to be done as far? There is no ventilation at all. We can do the wiring. We can get the equipment. But we're asking our members to go into that room and possibly get the virus. Uh, the um, the uh, community people are on Zoom. They are safe. And that seems to me to be uneven. That's not a, a, an equal amount of uh, anything. Uh, I think that maybe, being that I was uh, instrumental in getting the air conditioner way back when, uh, there might be some kind of filtering that can be added to the air conditioner that it would be a safer situation. I don't know, but I think something should be looked at as far as the location of the conference room, which is extremely small, has no windows. There is no way of getting in and out once you're in there. And uh, even if you have all the, uh, you know, machinery and, and wiring and everything else, you are putting people at risk. Um, your point is well taken. Kira, do you want to talk about what you've bought, uh, the filters uh, and the air yeah, purifiers um, at this juncture? I mean, Sylvia, you're preaching to the choir. We're in there. Um, it doesn't always feel comfortable. One of our staff members is out sick right now with coronavirus, and, you know, it brings up all these questions, you know, was it in there? Am I exposed? So on and so forth. So you're preaching to the choir on this. Um, we had the air conditioner company come out. All the filters have been replaced, um, which we replace them every uh, four to five months to begin with. Um, I've ordered new air purifiers for the for each room in the office. Um, one heavy duty one for the conference room, which had you know great reviews. Um, so I, I understand the concern about ventilation, but other than putting in windows and you know um, something that we can't do, I think we've we've kind of done everything we can do. 
Um, and, you know, if it were up to me, yeah, everyone coming in for a meeting should wear a mask. Um, every other week, our office is sanitized by our cleaning company. Um, that's something we can increase if that's what the board wants. Um, but we, we are taking this seriously. And, you know, I'm like you, I wish we could continue on Zoom and all stay safe at home. Um, but unfortunately, the governor has called, you know, <clears throat> called all public bodies back into meeting in person. The other thing is, I want to mention, when we met there in person, the tables would double. Uh, you could not walk into that room and get around those tables. That's Those are gone. We have a single table. And we're moving every single thing that's in there, whether there's shelves, furniture, there's a lot of stuff out of that conference room. So the only thing that will be there is mainly chairs, not so much tables. Tables take up a lot of room. And so we're gonna try different things so that it's just more spacious. I mean, we can't expand the walls, but there's a lot of crap in there. And that was taking up space and too many tables. So we're working on, you know, what we can work on. Um, but thank you, Sylvia. Uh, uh, Julia, um, uh, and then, uh, Joy, your hand was up before. Actually, Sylvia took my question. I just wanted oh, to okay. know, will the spaces uh, accommodate social distancing? Will these, these conference spaces? Uh, we'll spread out as much as we can, but you know, it depends on how many people are in that room. We will attempt, you know, attempt to do that, of course. Um, uh, Julia. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm <clears throat> a little dense. I just want to make sure I understand some of like, regardless, if we had not passed this resolution, we all have to go back. We as the community board, those of us appointed, everyone in, on this call, we have to go back in person regardless. That was never an option, correct? Correct. Like, no, okay. So the hybrid option then gives us the option of allowing the community to zoom in, Correct. Correct. So like if I wind up, and we all know this isn't going to happen, but indulge me, it makes me feel better. With a committee of 13, I can decide my committee's too big for the conference room. I'm going to have in-person meetings in a larger space so that we can wear masks and social distance. And I'm not going to take the community board up on the hybrid. We're just going to, my committee can, I can make that decision that my committee can go back in person. To a larger and, venue. If I'm and not comfortable in the conference room, right? That yes, you have that option. I mean, right now it's there's a whole three of us, so I think we'll be fine. But I'm just I, <laughs> no, no. But, but I'm glad you're asking these questions. Um, the only tweak on this is if a committee uh, is using the hybrid model, allowing the public to come in and Zoom, then that committee also has. Um, the ability to excuse some board members uh, who have extenuating circumstances, uh, they can zoom in. Which, if you decide you're not doing, you know, hybrid schmybrid, you're just going pre-COVID. Everybody has to be there. There is no possibility of being excused. But they don't count as a, a That's uh, right. quorum, they don't, so they you don't might not have quorum. a quorum. Well, you know what? This is data. This is what we have to see. What happens with this? If we end up with no quorums and we can't do business, um, then you know we're we're once we get started with this in the resolution, it gives us you know uh, six months evaluate and decide to to keep doing it or uh, chuck it. I mean that's in our resolution. Again, we don't know what's going to happen until we. We try it. But those are good questions. Um, every, all the questions are good. Uh, and, and I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody's feedback. Um, David. Uh, yes, yeah, so two things. Uh, one, uh, we, we haven't decided yet whether it's the chair or the committee members or some combination thereof of each committee will, who, will decide whether to go hybrid or not. That's still to be determined. Uh, the other thing I, I, I had a question for, uh, Kira, have you explored the possibility with the landlord of using that uh, acupuncture space 
uh, up the stairs from us because it's bigger and it does have an external door. Maybe on an ad hoc yeah. basis. Yeah, no, um, we've explored several times with the landlord and they're not um, open to it right now. Okay. And I've spoken to a neighbor of ours in the building hoping to do something similar and they weren't open it to, open for them either. Okay. They, well, they didn't okay. even consider it, David, when we were under four feet of water. Really? <laughs> right. We wanted to go into another space, this, that, and the other thing. Um, so that's Are you not counting enough. down the days when you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Thank any you. Any other, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, more to be continued. Laura? When Kira gives her report, she'll talk about, you know, other Laura? things in the office. Yes, who? Yeah, I want to go back to Julia's comment. Okay. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page with this. Right now, we have to go back into real life, real old meetings, the way they always were. Public is invited, they sit around, they don't sit around. That's totally within what was always in the past. That, that continues. I'm being attacked here. Um, the issue if we go hybrid, then we can, then the public can attend via Zoom, but there's no requirement if we go in person that we provide for Zoom. Is that I say that understandably? We go back to any one of our meetings, they're all in person. Public is welcome to attend as, is, as they may choose. And there's no requirement on our, beha our behalf to provide for tele teleconferencing in any way for the outside. We're going back to the way it was. I think we've been talking about that if we do go hybrid, A, we have to provide the public that opportunity. And uh, we have to make it so that the public has the opportunity to speak even if they are teleconferencing. So just, just Julia, there's no, if we go back to the way it was, there's no need, there's no requirement that we provide for Zooming for the public. You're, you're correct. A positive thing about meeting in our own conference room is that it is our conference room. We're having a hell of a time finding venues, to tell you the truth. Um, and so even if a committee is not hybrid, they could meet in our, you know, in our office. But being, I mean, they'd have to be a small committee and depending on what the agenda is. But the benefit of, of um, you know, equip, equipping our, um, our conference room to make it easy peasy, hopefully, um, is that the public will not be there because there is no room for them in the conference room and they don't have to be there because it's all about the meeting notice. Is there a Zoom link on that meeting notice? If there is, they're gonna Zoom in. They're not gonna physically be there. And there's certainly enough room for, you know, for a committee, basically, especially the way we're rearranging it now. So that's, you know, getting venues is a problem. We're getting no's left and right. We just found out that the Y on the 29th closes at eight o'clock. And that's why we were counting on that, that venue. And we'll use them in the future. We'll get their hours and figure it out. But, um, you know, a lot of committees are gonna have to meet in the, in the conference room. Whether they're, you know, Zooming in the public or not. So, but of course, if the agenda is a hot item, we will strive to find something somewhere in this district. You know, so it, it's it's a problem. It's a headache. It's definitely the whole thing is a headache. Um, Ed, yeah, just briefly speaking about venues. Did you did you guys ever get any confirmation about the fiftieth? Because we had that discussion with Captain Gervin, and it was kind of in question whether they would even allow video recording in the mm -hmm. precinct due to sensitive. Um, Active law enforcement activities there. So that's kind of how we left it that 
he they have that notice that there's no video recording allowed up there, but he said he would look into it with the higher ups. I don't know if we've heard anything. If not, we need to follow up on that because that's that's the venue for my committee. So that's a make or break as far as I'm concerned. But your committee would be able to meet there. Absolutely. We yeah. just wouldn't be able to Zoom if they don't allow video recording in, in, in the building. Well, it depends if your committee chooses to even do that, that uh, the Zoom. Even if we did choose, if they don't allow us, we can't do it. So that's, that's right, right, right. the issue. Ed, we have not heard back and I wasn't at that meeting. I didn't even know that that came up. So now I can follow up with the captain. Great, I'll, I'll touch base here with, with you with that, thanks. Um, David? Yeah, so uh, uh, briefly, uh, just correlated what uh, Marty said. Uh, while we did vote to allow for a Zoom hybrid, it's conceivable, and we haven't discussed it, and we may never do it, but we may think about it over the summer, is that we could simply ha have all the participants meet in whatever room, be it our conference room or whatever, and we could conceivably simply um, use Zoom so that people could observe. They wouldn't uh, be able to necessarily participate, be it uh, a, a board member or a community uh, attendee, but it is conceivable they could just simply observe. And that may be sufficient for some. So it's something to think about during the summer. Yes, it wouldn't satisfy the, the open meetings law. No, I understand that. I understand but, that. It's, but, it's another but it's, option. Yes, it's something. Yeah. Okay, uh, David, Ed. Uh, I don't see any other hands, so um, let's just move on. Um, I just want to say briefly that um, after spending several months um, contacting Ward 7 and 12 <clears throat> for a potential Croton Filtration Monitoring Committee, um, it has not worked out because Ward 12 doesn't have a chair the past few months and presently they don't have uh, an acting chair. Um, and board seven had a similar situation where the, um, the chair was running for office and is on leave. And while the acting chair um, understood what this was all about, and by the way, I sent all the information to seven and 12 as far as what it is and how it was set up 23 years ago, uh, it, it was just impossible. Uh, we had hoped by June to have a date, but it was just without all the personnel in place um, on 7 and 12, it's just been very difficult. But I will endeavor to set something up for the fall. And that's what I told uh, FE at DEP yesterday. So I just wanted to give you that update. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, the FMC was set up 23 years ago by the city council um, to monitor the design, the construction, and um, mitigation projects in Van Cortland Park because of the filtration plant. And as we know, it's been, the plant's there, it was designed, it was built, but there are still two mitigating projects, the pedestrian bridge and the, um, the golf house, the golf course, uh, which is mainly in board seven. So we will pick that up in the fall, hopefully. Okay, let me see. Um, I'm, I'm gonna keep that short because at the end of this meeting, when we finish our agenda, I will be going into executive session um, to um, discuss some personnel matters. Okay, so let's see, moving right along, um, the treasurer's report, Joy. Good evening, everyone. This is the treasurer's report for June, 2022. Uh, calling your attention to item one, operating budget update, we now have $61,797 remaining. Uh, most of that obviously salaries um, for the 49 and change uh, figure. A breakout of the other than personal services, there is uh, $12,145 remaining. No budget mods. Item 1.3, 12,660 remaining. And I'm told that there have been additional purchases. I don't wanna step on 
uh, Kira's toes, but um, there has been a lag. There was a lag in, in updating this for some of the more recent purchases, which I'm sure she'll get into. And finally, 1.4 is the rent and energy detail. And that is, uh, we have $17,786 remaining. And that's the June 2022. Um, thank you, Joy. Thank you very much. I don't see any hands. Um, okay, so then we'll move right along to the district manager's report. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, just going to go briefly kind of down this. Um, but as Laura stated before, we are preparing the office for hybrid meetings. Um, accelerated Technologies, which was um, suggested to us by Do It, installed a large monitor in the conference room with a wireless mouse and keyboard. This is how committees will access Zoom and the public can attend remotely. Um, Chair Spalter has been a really big help in reorganizing the conference room and the office at large just to get ready for us to host meetings there. We've ordered masks, air purifiers, changed AC filters just to make attendees more comfortable and to make it more safer for all of us in the office. Um, we'll host trainings over the summer for committees that will use our office for meetings. Um, just like we did for Zoom, we can hold you know four, five, six different trainings so that everyone can get acclimated and sort of just learn the process. But it will be very similar to signing on to Zoom at your house. It's just gonna be on a really big computer. Um, it just gets tricky if and when committees meet at locations outside of our office. Um, as I stated last month, it, it gets tricky because of Wi-Fi issues, um, a, bringing equipment around, different things like that. So I'm working with our Zoom reps so that I can learn how to make this transition easier for everyone. Um, I'm also looking into different platforms if they are better than Zoom. I know a lot of other city agencies are using WebEx and, you know, I, I don't want to change from Zoom, but I'm exploring all of our options. Um, I'm as requested at the last exec and board meeting, I'm exploring what hiring a consultant would look like, um, you know, to attend meetings, to help us get set up, to teach us. So these are all things that I'm currently exploring on top of, you know, other day-to-day -day operations of the office. Uh, currently, we are working on distributing Yankee tickets to our local organizations and the Yankee awardees. Yankees chose five out of our nominees, so I, I was starting to contact them today. Um, and distributing 250 Yankee tickets to our Little Leagues, to our homeless shelter, to the precinct explorers, to the youth centers, to senior centers. So um, that's a pretty big job of coordinating. Um, over the, you know, just regarding budget, and I know budget chair David Gelman will get into this, but, um, you know, we, we've met a few times to go over the priorities. And over the past month, I've been in touch with different agencies and elected officials regarding what our priorities look like. I've been in touch with many of you trying to learn more about your requests, um, you know, changing language, suggesting joint requests and offering updates. I requested a meeting with council member Dinowitz's office where Chair Spalter, um, budget chair David Gelman, and I went over the request and got and we got updates on what's being funded um, from the city council and what might be coming down the pipeline. Just this week, I learned that funding for Washington's walk was made available by council member Sanchez and her participatory budgeting. Um, and that's been on our list for quite some time. I'll continue to work on this over the summer in preparation for our submission in October. And lastly, just a reminder that we are very busy in the office and a lot of the time we are short on staff because of vacation and sick time. Um, and we're busy closing out this year's files, getting bills paid and organizing the office for meetings. So please be mindful in getting your agendas in on time. Um, it takes a lot of time for us to figure out what agendas we're missing, getting in touch with all of you, getting them in, putting them on letterhead and getting them out in a timely fashion. So I just wanna put that out there and ask that you send it, um, send it to us in ample timing. And that's my report. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kira, for all you do. I see two hands, uh, Deb and Dan. Deb? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to raise, I think that Pierre Rina Sanchez's um, funding through the participatory budget was specifically for four, four basketball courts. I could be wrong. If it's Washington's walk, that's great. Um, but uh, I thought that it was directed specifically at the basketball courts in Port Four. It's like five hundred thousand dollars. You're right. I I um, confused that. You're right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Dan. Hey, Laura. And I'm not sure if it's part of something to go into exec, but I I know we had asked previously about a report on on the hours that were remaining. Um, it, is that going to be discussed a little bit later? That will be discussed in executive session. Understood. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, any other hands? Okay, so then we'll move on to our resolutions. Um, uh, sorry, uh, is, are there any updates on the uh, new office space, uh, the progress of the work, um, and one of the thing and the equipment that we thought we would like to have, like uh, the locks and video. I went by the building this week. It's locked. It's still under construction. The laundromat is starting to, is open, but next door, next, you know, that part, but the building well, it's is upstairs down. actually, isn't it? But the, the building has the paper up and the locks, you know, the building is still under construction. I don't see it before next summer, David. Whoa. Yeah. That's a big change. What, what leads you to believe that? I mean, last we thought it was going to be, uh, around New Year's, now you're talking four to six months later. What, what change in the schedule? Has DCAS given us any sort of uh, construction schedule or indication of uh, what needs to be done? The summer is, is a, you know, I just don't wanna be disappointed. You know, we were supposed to be moving this summer. So yeah, well, they said they thought it would be in early 2023. Um, they have not finished approving um, the, the latest design. They're still working on that. Um, and then everything takes, takes, seems to take time. If it's early, I'll be very happy. But no, I don't really have a report on that. That's, I would have reported on that in my JAS report if I had an update on that. Did, did we ask DCAS for when we would see that design so as to expedite this process? Because it just seems like, uh, you know, Tempest Fugit, time is running. Uh, with no indication of uh, uh, what uh, will keep it to a schedule. Um, uh, I think it's important to us. I mean, just our conversation 10 minutes ago, uh, the sooner we get out of uh, uh, Riverdale Avenue, the better. So, but there's no indication of a, of a schedule uh, and any adherence to it, and therefore no adherence to a, a timeline. Laura, may I just interject? Yes. Um, we have not been, David, we have not been told um, an exact timeline of when we will be moving of, of construction. Um, I think like Laura said, we just don't wanna be disappointed as we have so many times before. This is probably the most, one of the top three important things we're working on um, weekly. Um, I actually played phone tag with our consultant today and I was hoping to get an update before tonight We've gone through um, the design. Um, it's not finalized yet. So um, once it is final, you know, we're happy to go over it and to share it. Um, DCAS is constantly having staff changes. So we're trying to bring people up to speed and, and you know, that's taking some time and, and it's extremely frustrating for us. But like I said, this is one of the most important items that we're working on. And, time is of the essence. And if we did have a better conference room, we wouldn't have to deal with what we're dealing right. with now. Um, but we are at the mercy of DCAS, of our consultant, of the landlord and their delays. Um, you know, we are one of our latest question was, is the elevator even there yet? You know, because a lot of no, these delays not. are coming from the city and just bureau bureaucratic red tape. But we're also dealing with a lot of this backlog and building and ordering and, um, getting things for construction. So it has been a nightmare um, all along. And like I said, I played phone tag with our consultant this afternoon. So I, I, I was hoping to have a better update than that. Um, but we hear your concerns. We're living them every single day. Um, and once we have an update, we'll definitely share it with everyone. 
uh, it, it's pretty clear you're at the mercy of DCAS and whatever schedules they like to play with. Um, have we spoken with the uh, councilman's office to uh, put some pressure on DCAS to get us a schedule? I mean, classic project David, management. Actually, I have it written down somewhere else. There is a schedule. We've dealt with the council person's office. All our elected officials have been extremely helpful. The fact is this huge ton, 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 ton safe was taken out of our, our new office when originally it was meant to stay and the land and the whole design changed and uh we basically had to start from scratch but you know what i don't I, it's not on the agenda for tonight and i'd like to move on because we laura have... the, laura let me finish uh i mean I, it, it, this is the district manager's report this is the time to ask these questions and as i was about to say the, the way you get a project to go through in a timely fashion is to have a plan. Now, I understand that things happen, such as the safe, et cetera. However, it is important that we have a plan, that DCAS give us a plan. And since they appear to be reluctant to give us a plan, that's when I think we should be talking to the councilman's office to have them insist that we get a plan. Because right now we've gone from summer to winter to, to summer in terms of the project with uh, really no input. David, we have a plan from DCAS. Oh, we do? Yeah, we have a plan. Can we see um, it? We have a timeline where certain things, we're just waiting on the next, to hit the next step, which is finalizing the prelim preliminary design, which we've done three times. David, so okay. um, this is extremely have... frustrating. And um, I'm sure to be is. frank, having, you tell us what we need to do is also frustrating because we're doing it. Um, well, I'm happy to me, share that timeline with you. I don't have it handy, but like I said, the timeline might say one to three months, three to six months, seven to eight months. So like nothing is, is not no construction an exact timeline. Done. They haven't started just, construction. But and we're you know waiting what? on the next step, which is finalizing the preliminary design, which is what we're doing right now. They shared us a design. We did not like it. We sent them back to fix it. So that's what we're waiting on now. Okay, I, I appreciate that, Kira. And um, I understand why you might be frustrated by my questions. But then again, this is the first time I've heard of a project plan or a timeline. And we, we've been asking for this for months. No, we've I had think a timeline. Not, David, you know what? Me, I, I, got, I have to move on. We have capital and expense budget. I understand it, that. No, no, no. I, I, I think, in, I in think you asked next the question meeting, and it's been answered. I think it's important that we you know you're preaching to the choir honestly Laura, God, David. we've been asking for it for months and it's never thank you all right we, can i just Here, finish with you? this please i'm sorry we have a timeline we've had a timeline ever since i've started working at community board eight with under chair ginty the timeline keeps changing you know and that's out of our control like i said i've just gone through the preliminary design for the third time um, and that's them changing it, not us. That's the landlord. You know, we we have no control over that. Um, so, I like I said, we're I'm waiting on the you, final. Kira. I'm not blaming you. I no, would just I like us to I, be. I, I don't. I don't want to spend any timeline. more time. We're at an executive committee. We have. We're 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 many people here. I want to move on with the agenda. Question asked. Question answered. Thank you. Actually, no. But uh, let's move on. Thank you. <laughs> Damn. Let's put up the resolutions. Okay. I'm gonna do public safety okay. first here. Sure. <laughs> I can I can read it anyway. Here we go. Uh, Okay, Public Safety Committee had one resolution for uh, our May 17th meeting. It was for a full liquor license, uh, whereas Jose Jimenez, a representative at, of Estralita Poblama Tequila Express, located at 5975 Broadway, appeared before the Public Safety Committee on May 17th, 2022, to apply for a new liquor license and, and temporary retail permit. Um, they did sign a 2 a.m. closing agreement, agreeing to close their establishment no later than 2 a.m. Uh, 50th Precinct stated they were unaware of any 
prior notable disturbances at that location where the establishment's going to be. And the Public Safety Committee unanimously approved the application. That's it. Okay. Any questions to Ed? Very good. I believe in beer and wine, especially tonight. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we this have a TNT. Yeah, no. to, to counteract Laura's uh, beer and wine, we have an outdoor farmer's market. So, <laughs> um, whereas the James Baldwin Outdoor Learning Center presented their plan in support of a partial sidewalk closure for a weekly farmer's market on the closed slip lane off of Golden Avenue at Sedgwick Avenue on Saturdays from June 18th, 2022 through October 29th, 2022, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., including setup and breakdown time. Uh, whereas this farmer's market has occurred at this location during the summer since August 2020 without any community complaints. Whereas the JBOLC farmer's market is a valuable source for the Kingsbridge Heights community of locally grown fresh vegetables and fruit and features activities that include healthy cooking demos, story readings for children, poetry readings, and music performances. Um, therefore, be it resolved that the Community Board 8 Traffic and Transportation Committee supports the street activity permit for the partial sidewalk closure on the closed slip lane off of Golden Avenue requested by the James Baldwin Outdoor Learning Center Farmers Market. And it was, was a unanimous, um, uh, uh, it was passed unanimously. I've been to that market many a time. It's very nice. It's a great market. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, any questions for Deb? Okay. All right. Uh, now we move to the uh, special committees of which we have three to uh, renew in June. The first is the special committee on veteran services. And Sergio, Sergio will be presenting that um, at the end of the month. Um, okay. It is, it, any questions about, about this? We can roll that up. Laura David has his hand up. Um, you know, I didn't see, let me just go here. Uh, David. Yes, um, uh, they're all pretty much the same as uh, every year and they're fine, um, uh, no issues. Other than in this one, I think it is. If, if you could uh, um, uh, roll it up a little bit. Uh, the uh, we are selecting the chair as opposed to the other two special committees where the committees um, elect their chair. That seems peculiar. Um, it's uh, it's what uh, we had last year, and since it's a very small committee, Sergio would like to continue to chair it. I, I don't have a problem with his being the, the chair. I don't but, have a problem with their. But voting. you see, it is a flexible thing. That's the nature of special committees. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes the, um, the chair is, is selected. Sometimes they're elected. There is no one rule as, as long as it's stated in the resolution. I'm just pointing out that it's peculiar that it's different from the others. Fine. And shouldn't be. Thank you, David. Should be noted. Okay. Uh, next one. the SCREE resolution. In this one, the very first time it was formed, David, um, a few years ago, Roz was the chair. And as chair of the board, that's that. After that, that committee selected its chair. Um, so again, it's that flexible flexibility. Uh, any questions about SCREE? Uh, Deb, is your hand up from before or now? Uh, for this one, um, you know, I, I noticed with the, the Veterans Committee, it said, and other members uh, to be determined, which kind of opened it up a little bit so that you didn't need a new resolution if others wanted to join the, this committee. This seemed like the kind of committee where there's been a lot of flux with membership, and it might be helpful to add that clause to this committee as well so that others may join it without doing a new resolution. That was just my thought. Right, well, um, Sergio last year lost several members. Uh, they mm -hmm. dropped off the board. Louis Lopez was one, and um, 
I forget, it's a very, very small committee. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, every year, Sergio makes several announcements to the board um, about joining that committee. Every committee has a different character. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I consult with chairs on membership and Sergio has one way and, you know, we'll see. And, he, you know, we'll yeah, see. No, if, I mean, if the members yeah. of the current members mm -hmm. of the committee don't right. want to have it be open, then that's fine too. I just wanted to suggest, it. I know like with the other, the, right, the Henry right, Hudson right. one, it's more closed. I just right. wanted to raise it. Okay. Each one is very different. And then the last one is the Hudson River Greenway. And uh, Bob, the fearless leader of that special committee, he didn't even give us a hard time this year about renewing. <laughs> um, so those are, that is it. Any other questions or comments? All right, so then we'll move on to a uh, discussion of the draft fiscal year 24 preliminary capital and expense budget items. Um, I hope everyone had a chance to look at it. Uh, bear in mind, it's a work in progress um, and that we will continue meeting with chairs, calling you, calling the agencies, OMB, to get more information about these requests. Uh, sometimes they've been funded and sometimes uh, we can consolidate. Well, sometimes OMB says this really isn't a budget request. There isn't a someone to send that to, and then we'll, you know, surface with the with the uh, the committee chair. Um, it's very difficult to um, when you have so many items to uh, you know get them into an approximate order, and that's what tonight is for. It's just for discussion um, and you know hear anybody's uh, you know feedback. And then we will continue the discussion in September. We vote on it in October, uh, but you'll get it well advanced in September. And uh, we'll know a lot more about each item. Um, today, there was a big article, and thank you, David, for sending it in uh, Gotham Gazette about um, the digital divide and the city's efforts to uh, bring in more um, internet access and how it's kind of floundering um, and some of our, you know, I was thinking of our requests, um, you know, things seem to be uh, in, in tremendous flux about whether to continue the program that started a few years ago. You know, so things, these are real items and they're rolling in real time. So with that, um, uh, I'll hand this over to David, if you have a few words to say, and then uh, Kira, why don't you start putting it up on the screen? What do you want to start with, David? Capital or expense? Um, it, it, uh, either one is fine. I just wanted to note two things. One, just listening. I'm so glad that we're on Zoom tonight. It is, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is just crashing outside. Um, but anyway, um, besides the uh, the uh, technology thing that, that I sent around this morning, I just saw in today's uh, Riverdale Press that apparently... Um, Marble Hill is going to get a, a redone uh, senior center, which yeah. was really nowhere on our, our radar. But, you know, as I've always said, there are budgets and there are budgets. So it's it just a uh, point of information. Um, but uh, no, uh, the, uh, uh, Laura, Kira and I met and uh, discussed the, this, uh, you know, just with an eye to the usual things within the uh, community, demography, uh, geography, Etc. So, um, but uh, please feel free to uh, comment or or uh, um, lobby for uh, priorities because that's really what I think that we should be doing uh, as an executive committee in preparation to present it to uh, the uh, the budget hearing for the community board in October, uh, so that the the community can uh, have their input. And then the community board would right immediately thereafter vote on it. But this is a starting point based on your inputs. Okay, so um, comments are welcome. Suggestions? Let me see. I don't see any hands. Could this be a happy, happy camper crowd? Okay. Um, 
Okay, I, I don't, and anybody have any comments? Um, they're all, every single request is a jewel and we'll get, you know, no matter where they are on the list. Okay, I see Dan. Uh, I just and had a I question. See, but I see Deb, Deb and Dan. No, yeah, I just had one question. Were these sent out? I, I might've missed it. A couple of days ago. It was, okay, so I'll look back through the emails. Okay, thanks. I think it, was, it was last Friday. Last Friday, okay. Great, uh, right, before, right before the holiday. See, you were getting busy to uh, party and you just- Yes, 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 yes. Okay, <laughs> awesome. I'll check back on the emails from Friday then. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Deb. Yeah, no, I just want to say, I, I, I overall, I thought it was a, but I really only focused on the first 10 because I think of those as being the real, the real crux of it. And I thought that there was a nice balance um, across the district and across the committees. Um, and so I didn't, yeah, I don't have, I thought, I don't have any issues with it. I thought, you know, there's certainly, I'm sure folks will advocate for specific things, but particularly having like the Bailey playground number two, I thought was really great. And the boiler number one, like I, I you know, you can't argue with that. That's just like vital. Um, so that's all I just thought I would throw we, my, my two we, cents in. We endeavored to hit as many hot spots, you know, as we can. Um, okay, Dan, is your hand up from before or? From before, let me get okay. that down. Thank you. Uh, so why don't we put up the expense budget then? May I, may I just add? Um, sure. You know, um, we'll be continuing to work on this throughout the summer like we did last year. Um, I expect we will get updates. Things will be changed. Um, you know, we'll have new ideas. And then I believe... Uh, Laura, David, correct me if I'm wrong. We'll bring this back to the executive committee in September to discuss, mm -hmm. you know, in October and finalize it before it goes to the full board. I think there's there might be some new people here, so we should just explain that. Yeah, um, if, if I could note, um, Kira, I think you brought it to our attention while we were meeting how um, the city uh, had just advised you of uh, the plan to take care of the roof of the sanitation garage on 218th Street. So yeah. the, this is always going to be evolving in, uh, and you, uh, this, the stuff that you uh, update us with during the summer is very, very helpful, just like that one. Yes, will do. And, I, and I'm, I'm reaching out to different agencies. I mentioned this to Sylvia. Um, they redid the field and some work at PS81. Um, I find it hard to believe that they won't come back and, and repave the schoolyard after all that construction. So I'm in, I've been in touch with SCA and the council member's office just to, you know, just to make sure of that. So there's some requests that, you know, hopefully come off, hopefully are done and, and, and we can, you know, shift things up. But um, that's just one example of um, something that I'm waiting to hear back on. Okay, so I ask a question. Yes. One item, uh, maybe I, I'm just not informed, but youth has a, a DYCD DOE um, item about college access for all. And that's a great thing. Uh, but um, it says that, that uh, you want the program to be expanded throughout all community board eight middle schools. In middle school, they're not thinking about college yet. Does that mean it's supposed to be high schools? Um, Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah, I, I just want to look. Um, what number is it? Because I can't read the screen, but I have oh, it. Oh, it's um, 28. 28, yeah. Right. Um, let me just see. There are very few middle very schools old. in yeah. Community Board 8. Mm -hmm. I think Ram Dot might want to answer that, and I yeah, think yeah, he's here too. Yeah, sure. so um, I teach at 141. It is a middle school and high school, and we do have college and career access programs for the middle school specifically. And I know that the DOE has done allocations for college and career readiness in middle school to get middle schoolers thinking about college and career as they go into high school. So it's it's about transition. Uh, from middle school to high school, but also helping them to start thinking about post-secondary goals. So they are doing career and college readiness in middle schools currently. Good, thank you. Thank, thank you, Ramdot. 
uh, who's also on the youth committee. <laughs> uh, Margaret. I just had a question about um, the RKA request. Um, what number is it? It's under capital for okay. the space to be renovated. Okay. Uh, yeah, three, number three. Okay, uh, number three. Renovation. Number three under capital? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I was just curious about this because um, DOE has a sizable budget and um, and I was just wondering if, and especially with the federal dollars that came through, I was just curious as to, um, you know, how is this prioritized and is this something that typically, I mean, I've, I've seen other requests come through, but I haven't seen this request come through for um, this space previously and just curious about, uh, you know, sort of the competition for dollars and, and since they are discretionary dollars, I believe. So I just wanted to know a little bit more about the context of, of that request. Uh, the schools in general are um, falling apart. Auditoriums have been misused for many, many years. And a lot of the schools, I didn't put all of them in, uh, a lot of the schools um, have auditoriums that have broken uh, uh, seats and, and all kinds of other things. Um, I don't think it's uh, something that shouldn't be fixed. Uh, 24 is a very old school. And uh, over the years, uh, this has happened. And I, I feel that they are entitled to have seats that children can sit in. Well, I'm not suggesting that children shouldn't have seats to sit in, but um, are replacing chairs, is that a capital expense or is that an expense expense? It, it, it's a capital only because um, there are other things involved also. There's uh, the broken seats, the uh, audio visual stuff, the obsolete stage and, and the lighting. I mean, it all adds up to a lot of money. Uh, if I may, uh, Margaret, uh, you may not have sat on in on these uh, before, uh, but th for some reason, the city uses an arbitrary figure of thirty five thousand dollars to delineate between yeah, uh, expense familiar. and capital budgeting, which to me makes no sense. To me, capital budgeting is for something that will uh, you know, last for uh, more than five years. But those are their rules. So those are, that's what we have to do. And. I'm confident that uh, the seating and the AV and the stage and the lighting, yeah, that's going to be over thirty-five thousand. And 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 personally, I don't think that the these school things should be on our budgets. I think SCA should be managing these things for the upkeep of their buildings, but they don't. So we have to request them every year or two. There is a fairly big ticket item like this that comes up that really we shouldn't have to deal with, but we do um, because the, uh, they, they, they really don't look at their buildings as um, capital uh, um, uh, 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 buildings that require long-term planning as opposed to an annual program or something like that. So we, we, are, we are forced to do this um, with, um, uh, with parks and, and same issue, I'm sorry, with uh, education uh, buildings, school buildings. And we have this issue with parks because parks doesn't have a capital budget, but that, that's just the reality that we are dealing with. We have to work within that construct. And also- Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, wait, Sylvia, did you want to say something? And then- I just wanted to add that 141 had uh, their auditorium on our capital budget for a number of years. And when uh, Eric Dinowitz uh, came into office, he picked it up with his um, the extra money. So um, this is really a two-fold kind of thing. We don't usually get a lot of money from OMB, but perhaps elected officials will see certain things and uh, pick them up and pay for them and the children will benefit by it. Sylvia, at the meeting David and Kira and I attended with the budget, um, 
the council person's uh, budget um, director, that's exactly the kind of thing that we were looking at. Education, what was in the different schools, what was in. So we're, we're just looking at in all avenues to try to get this done. Right. Uh, at 24, we did a, um, when Eric was first on education, we went from school to school and looked to see what it was that they wanted for the budget. He thought that was a good idea. And we went into 24 and you'll see that on the Capitol, they also have, um, they have 16 bathrooms, which are, are unbelievable. I mean, you wouldn't have that in your own home. There are uh, faucets that don't have handles. You can't turn them on uh, opposite the uh, lunchroom. So a kid has to go to the bathroom, can't even wash their hands. Uh, tiles that have fallen off the walls. I mean, all kinds of things. OMB doesn't pay for that. It's really the elected officials that pick those things up. Okay, um, thank you. And I see Randot and Margaret. Um, I, I had another point, but um, to answer Margaret's question about federal dollars from the stimulus, um, those are actually earmarked for certain programs. Um, so there were certain dollars that were for social emotional, there were certain dollars for like academic enrichment, so on and so forth. I believe there are no dollars earmarked for infrastructure, but from the federal stimulus. When it came to, when it came to education, Ramdot, you were going in and out, so I couldn't hear what you. The last thing you said, it was lost. Um, um, um yeah. Still, so I don't think it was. Now I hear you. Uh, for, any, for infrastructure, um, from the federal stimulus dollars. Um, and I actually had another point about one of the expense um, requests about um, that was remembered. Again, um, it's it sounding like know. robotic. Is it just me or the other people can understand? I'm getting it too. Okay, there's like a, a feedback or something, Ramdot. Can't make it. Probably out. on the phone. Okay. You join. I'll leave and come back. Okay. Um, all right, I don't see any further hands. Why don't we move in, move on with the agenda. And thank you all for your feedback um, to be continued. So next is committee member issues for discussion. Do I see any hands? Follow up on outstanding issues. Uh, I have one item on the uh, committees. I sent. Uh, Go right to, ahead. I sent to all the uh, members of the executive committee and to LRE uh, the update on the guidelines that we talked about last month. Uh, I asked for input. I want to bring this before the board. Uh, if there's time to bring before the board uh, at our board meeting and make it part of the manual as a guideline recommendations to chairs about the important things they need to look for and look at when conducting meetings and what the public should be prepared to be prepared to expect. So I just note to you that it was sent out today. I apologize for lateness. I fell asleep at the wheel, um, but take a look at it. And again, I, I welcome your comments. That's Marty. It. Uh, I have a question. Um, we don't formally vote on this. I, I thought no. that, the, the, right, there's no, for, so it's just kind of like by consensus. I just want people's input. People's input. What's coming up. Okay, so um, didn't didn't we discuss this last month and the month, I mean, we have to- Yes, but I gave people the opportunity to, uh, to update, to uh, Add anything if they wanted to. I received one. I will take a look at this last at this last uh, draft and uh, definitely get comments to you then. Okay, but there isn't a, a formal vote. It's just uh, then it's going to go into the online procedures guide. Correct. Right. Okay. All right, um, uh, David, your hand is up from before. Uh, yes, actually from before. Okay. Um, typically, we get this in uh, middle of May. Uh, do we have a report from the nominating committee 
11 of the 13 positions are uncontested. I know that there've been some interesting wrinkles uh, at the last minute about two of the committees, but the, the rest I think were largely uncontested. Do we have a report from nominating uh, um, in the interim? Dan? Uh, no, no other report at this time other than our emails that are going out. We did extend you know, the period um, for folks who would be interested in the Parks Committee uh, to June 6th, which is the new deadline for it. Um, our next nominating committee meeting is June 13th. And pursuant to uh, the Ethical Guidance Manual, our report is due on June 15th, which is, you know, two weeks before the board meeting. You know, normally our report probably already would have been in at this time if our meeting was the second Tuesday of the month. Um, but because of the new board date being the 29th, our report will be out June 15th. Actually, last year and the years before, it was May 15th, May 20th. Uh, I believe it's always two weeks prior to the board meeting at the annual election. I believe that's minimum of 10 days. Right. I, I'm just saying yeah. the last couple of years, it's been May 20th. Even sooner than that. Got it. Well, we, we didn't have the Philharmonic last couple of years. That's why we're late year. This, this, this year. Okay. So um, thank you, Dan. Thank you, thank you David. Um, all right. So then I would like to uh, move into, make a motion to go into executive session. Um, an issue was raised regarding personnel last month, and um, it, this would be under section 105 of the open meetings law to have a discussion. Is there anyone outside of executive committee on this uh, call here? Yeah, we have Sachi. Sachi from Riverdale Press. Okay. Uh, well, first we'll vote. Is there anyone opposed to going into executive session? Anybody abstaining? Okay, so then we, we will now move into executive session uh, to discuss a private matter, Sashi. And um, basically- I'll, I'll leave, yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And we, Laura, we, we will come out of executive session um, just for the public to understand. And I'm assuming then the committee will adjourn, but we will come out of executive session. Okay, so um, we've been asked to report on staff time accruing. And now I get to, to say the best part. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a yes, second? Sir. Second. Okay, I wanna wish everyone a wonderful evening and we'll see you on the 29th. Really see you. And um, I wanna thank everybody for your hard work this year. This is the June meeting. Um, Ramdot and Deb, you've been great members and sorry to lose you. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think this is a great team and will always be a great team. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night. 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 Good night. Good night.